from November of 2020 to November of 2021, that would be roughly from Election Day to the end of Joe Biden's first year running the country, gas prices in the United States went up by more than 66 percent. That was the single highest year over year increase since 2002, which happens to be the year that government started tracking those data. Now, this happened before Russia invaded Ukraine. Why did it happen? Super simple. Joe Biden on the campaign trail told us he was like Superman. And then he proceeded to jump off the garage. He told us he was going to end fossil fuels. And because no one took him seriously because he's senile and wasn't actually going to win, no one followed up with, what are you, insane? How are you going to do that? And so he kept going. And then he became president somehow. And then he followed through on that promise. He canceled pipelines. He terminated oil and gas leases. He rejoined the Paris Climate Agreement without explaining why we should. And by the way, if the climate is such a crisis, an existential crisis, and China and India are using more fossil fuels than they did 10 years ago and nobody says anything about it, maybe they're not really sincere about this global warming thing. And then on top of all of that, Joe Biden pumped trillions more dollars into the U.S. economy, thereby devaluing the U.S. dollar, making everything, including energy, more expensive. And the bottom line is, if we want lower gas prices, we need to have a more oil supply right now. Today, I'm authorizing the release of one million barrels per day for the next six months, over 180 million barrels for the strategic from the from the strategic petroleum reserve. This is a wartime bridge to increase oil supply until production ramps up later this year. And it is by far the largest release of our, net, of our national reserve in our history. So you watch that and you realize really the whole point of the Joe Biden presidency is to humiliate the rest of us and think less of our own country, the place where we were born. You can just imagine Barack Obama and Susan Rice and Ron Klain, people who truly dislike the United States as currently constituted, saying, let's make this guy president. That'll grind it in their face, a guy who can barely talk. So it's hard to hear anything Joe Biden says because it's hard for him to say anything. But if you listen carefully or read a transcript, you will learn what he just said is that we're releasing a million barrels per day for a total of more than 180 million barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which is held in caverns in a couple of states. How much is that? It's a staggering figure. So let's put it in context. The reserve can hold more than 700 million barrels total, but it didn't have that because Congress, by the way, as you haven't been paying attention, has been selling off our Strategic Petroleum Reserve to pay off debt. So by the time Joe Biden arrived, there was far less than that. There was about 568 million barrels of oil in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Now, no president in American history has ordered a drawdown this large. In 1991, at the beginning of Operation Desert Storm, which was an actual war with real American soldiers involved, the U.S. government released 17 million barrels of oil as a way of assuring a stable supply of global crude. The U.S. released just 20 million barrels after Hurricane Katrina destroyed parts of the Gulf Coast where so many refineries are. But now we're releasing many times that figure from the reserve, all to protect the Democratic Party from getting what it deserves in the midterm elections in November. And as a result of that unbelievably reckless, in fact, criminal decision, our strategic oil reserves are now at their lowest level in nearly 40 years, and they are dropping fast. Again, none of this needed to happen. There was no reason to tap our strategic petroleum reserve when we could produce the energy here. And we're, in fact, producing it until Joe Biden took office. But at the same time, you have to be honest, principles of supply and demand would suggest that this would work in the short term. Releasing all this oil should have lowered gas prices until the reserve ran out, which it will. So you inject more petroleum into the market and prices for gas should drop. But here's the amazing thing. That's not happening. Since Joe Biden started releasing all this oil from our reserves, which he does not own, you do, we do, what has happened to gas prices? They haven't dropped. They've kept going up. Huh? In mid-June, the price of both regular unleaded and diesel, critically, hit all-time highs, well over five bucks a gallon nationally. How could this be? It really was a mystery. It violated the most basic rules of economics. But now, thanks to a new report in Reuters, we know why. It turns out the oil being released isn't for us. It's going to India and China. According to Reuters, and we're quoting, more than 5 million barrels of oil that were part of a historic U.S. emergency reserve release to lower domestic fuel prices were exported to Europe and Asia last month. 
The piece continues, quote, cargo of SPR crude, oil from our reserves, were also headed to the Netherlands into a Reliance refinery in India, an industry source said. A third cargo, buckle your seatbelt, headed to China. To China. So as gas prices set records in this country, as American citizens who are born here and vote and pay taxes cannot afford to fuel their own cars, the Biden administration is selling off our emergency oil reserves to China. That's not an indictable offense. It's certainly an impeachable one. And they should impeach him for that. Now, if you're keeping track, they didn't even need it. China and India already have access to very cheap oil from Russia. Why? Thanks to the Biden administration's a lunatic ban on Russian oil imports. According to customs data, China spent $19 billion on Russian oil, gas, and coal earlier this year. That's double the amount they spent over the same period last year. India spent $5 billion on Russian oil. That's up five times from what they spent a year ago. So we just made Russia a ton of money. That's why the ruble is so strong as the dollar is getting weaker. Russia has raked in $13 billion in additional revenue from India and China compared to the same period last year. Following all this? This is how we're punishing our enemies? By selling off our own most valuable assets and watching Russia and India and, my God, China get richer? Now, on top of all of that cheap Russian oil, China is getting petroleum from our emergency petroleum reserves. The crude, by the way, in the SPR is the best crude that we have. It's called medium sour crude. It's the easiest to process. And we're giving it away to a government whose whole goal is to displace us on the global stage and crush us. The Chinese will be cruel masters when they run the world. They're not like us at all. There's a Reuters report um, out this morning that says that more than 5 million barrels of oil that were released from the emergency of oil reserves were exported to Europe and Asia last month, and some of it reportedly was actually heading to China. Uh, is the administration aware of those reports, and um, you know, does, it, does the president mind that some of this oil that was meant to uh, ease pain for consumers is headed overseas? I have not seen that report, so I would honestly have to go look into it and see what what the truth is in that in that uh, statement that you just laid out and see exactly what's happening. I, I just have not seen that report. If someone asks you in the White House briefing, oh, by the way, is the U.S. government selling our strategic petroleum reserve to our main enemy in the middle of a gas shortage? You probably should have an answer or at least seem embarrassed that you don't. It's a very simple question. Why does customs data show that we are sending millions of barrels of oil to China? Huh? It's been 24 hours since that briefing. We still don't have an answer. And of course, that tells you what's really going on here. This is not a mistake. It's intentional.